Welcome everyone to this summer special episode of Royals, Rebels, and Romantics. We are continuing our fun with fiction. And what we thought we'd do, Lindsay and I are both going to share one of our favorite historic novels, tell you a little bit about it. Maybe you already know it, maybe it's something new, but we wanted to share some of the things we have been reading fiction wise to get everybody excited. There is, I know some kids are already back in school. Lindsay's daughter is back in school, but some still have a little bit of time. And I consider August to still be summer. So I, I do still think we're doing some summer fun with fiction. So welcome, Lindsay, and thank you for joining yes. us. Yes, very excited to be here to talk about books. <laughs> yes, talking about books. Lindsay and I spent a lot of time talking about books. So yes. we thought we'd share this with you. So uh, we're each going to answer some questions about our books and just kind of introduce you to them. So I'm going to start by asking Lindsay, and then I'll do the same. Tell us a little bit about your book. Tell us the title and the author, the time period it's in, and just a quick overview. We'll go into some deeper questions, but just a quick overview of your book. Okay, well, this is my book. It's called To Shield the Queen by Fiona Buckley. And it's um, set during the reign of Elizabeth I, which is the best. <laughs> Um, so a quick synopsis would be, um, that a recently widowed noble lady, um, gets a position at court. And so she's goes to court. And then while she's there, she kind of starts learning some things about, some uh, personal and political things that are going on. Um, and pretty quickly after she arrives, she is tasked with going to live in the household of Amy Dudley. Uh -huh. And um, because Amy is very insistent that somebody is trying to kill her. Mm. <laughs> and so there are all these rumors spreading and, um, so Elizabeth sends her there to kind of be like, look, we've got someone watching over her. Everything is fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but while she's there, um, she learns that maybe Amy is not crazy. Maybe someone is really trying to kill her. And so she kind of uncovers things through the people and events that happen and while she's there, um, that maybe that is something to be worried about. She also sort of uncovers a Catholic plot to overthrow Elizabeth. Ooh. And so it's these two things that she sort of is solving these two mysteries together at the same time. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to kind of see how she figures things out and to meet all these people that um, we know very well from real history. And then also some made up people too. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's great. Okay. That's good. I can't wait to hear more. So very quickly, yeah. my book is the lady of misrule. And actually there's a question of, at the end about who is the real lady of misrule. So there are a couple of mm -hmm. options. It's by Susanna Dunn. And one of the things I think that's interesting, so it's during the Tudor reign, you can tell Lindsay and I are both lovers of the Tudor time period. Yeah. And it's during <laughs> the time of Lady Jane Grey, but it's after Mary has taken the throne. So there are other books that sort of focus on Lady Jane as she takes the throne and what she does during that period of time when she's considered queen. And then when Mary comes in, the focus of course turns to Mary. But this book stays with Lady Jane Grey and someone who is assigned to be her lady while she is a prisoner in the tower. And I thought that was interesting because I hadn't ever seen a focus on Jane during that period of time. And it, it's just really interesting. So it's between she loses the throne to Mary in July. Of course, she also gains the throne in July. It's a very brief reign, but yeah. it's July. But then it lasts until, spoiler alert, 
Jane Grey's execution in February. So it traces that period mm -hmm. of time while she's in the tower, sort of out of the public eye, but everybody's still aware of her. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so where did you find out about this book and what sort of made you want to read it? Well, um, it was actually recommended to me. I love visiting local bookshops wherever I go. And so I was in a small independent bookshop and um, was just looking for something different, but something in my time period. So they asked me what I was interested in and I told them the tutors, mm -hmm. but I wanted some fiction. So it was recommended to me by a bookshop, which I always think is kind of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I didn't read it immediately. It kind of went on the very large to be read pile. <laughs> but uh, I recently did a talk about Lady Jane Grey for the Smithsonian. And so I was just interested. Um, I know this is fiction, so I didn't use this in the talk, but I was just interested in learning more, seeing Jane in some new ways. So that's how I found out about it. How about you? How did you find out about yours? I um, just, I often look at Pinterest and uh, just browse on Amazon mm -hmm. <laughs> like that for new ideas. I read a lot. So I, I am constantly looking for new things to read. So it was just self myself researching, looking around. So probably someone on Pinterest in a blog post or somewhere was like, this is a good book. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's often fun. So, I don't remember exactly where or how, but it, it was just, yeah, like that. Okay. And it appealed to you just from the yes. description. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell us a little bit more. What did you really enjoy and did it surprise you? I know you've read a lot about the Elizabethan period. So did it surprise you and did it have some favorite characters, either real or imagined? So tell us about that. Yes. So I really enjoyed the mystery aspect of it. I don't usually go for mysteries just because even though there is a dead person in this one, <laughs> often in mysteries, it's a very gruesome death. And so I don't really like that, but, um, but this one was fine. And I thought it was kind of interesting because it's more of a puzzle trying to figure out, you know, ahead of the people who are plotting what's going to happen and trying to get the information in time so that you can pass it along to the right people that can actually do something about it. And so it was kind of fun like that to put um, kind of, you know, she's not like an official spy, but kind of a spy-ish sort of theme to <laughs> a lady of the court, right? So it was mm -hmm. kind of interesting to see that. Um, I really liked actually Amy Dudley's character. I thought reading her, the pieces with her in it were very interesting because, um, you know, she's often put into the story of, of Elizabeth and Robert Dudley because she has to be right. And so you get kind of a small little pieces of information about her, but, um, but I feel like you don't really know a lot about her life or things except for what's in the context of Elizabeth and Dudley, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so it was kind of interesting to see who she was in this version of events, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. That this is a possible Amy Dudley, right? So I thought that was kind of interesting um, to see from her perspective things. Um, and the main character I thought was really great. She's strong and intelligent and very capable. And um, so, yeah, I thought, I thought it was interesting to read from her perspective. Well, that is one of the things that um, can be really illuminating with historic fiction is we have these characters kind of like Amy Dudley and a little bit on the sidelines, you know, yeah. and then get fleshed out a little bit. It, we know it's just a, a possibility, but it is interesting to maybe see them from a new perspective. Yeah. So that sounds really interesting. Yeah. How about you? So this is, this is kind of similar because, you know, we don't really know Jane Grey all that well. There's just a little bit of right. time about her. 
But one of the things um, in, in doing the historic research for the Smithsonian talk was how hard she worked to keep her throne when she was on the throne and all of the letters. And we, there are still copies of some of the letters that she sent out while, you know, she was queen for, I know some people say nine, I happen to think it was 13 days. Um, but she is demanding support from the nobles throughout the land. And she is asking them to support her as queen and asking her to send them to send her troops and, she is working really hard to keep the throne. Now she didn't seek it, but you know, the Victorians sort of reimagined her as this victim, this really soft spoken victim. And that yeah. really isn't the impression you get from these letters that she's signing. And there were quite a few of them. So I was yeah. intrigued with her character. Once she's again, she's out of the Royal apartment. She's not sent to a dungeon, but she is sent to other rooms in the tower. She's separated from Guildford in this version. She's living on her own with a servant. And it was interesting to me to see she is still a very strong person. She is opinionated, which does come through um, again historically and we know while she was in the tower she was very disappointed that some of her colleagues went along with Mary's invitation Mary the first invitation to become Catholics in order to save their lives and Mary did make mm -hmm. that offer to Jane Grey and Jane Grey was adamant that she would never do that and yeah. And we do see from the historic letters she wrote that she was very disappointed in these people. And that comes through in the novel. So in the novel, what they have is the woman, uh, Elizabeth Tilney. Now there are characters in history named that, but this is an invented Elizabeth Tilney for mm. this novel. But the Tilney family certainly is a prevalent family of the time. And so Elizabeth Tilney is Catholic and she is serving Jane Grey, who is where she is because she's Protestant. That's why Edward chose her. And that's why she's refusing to leave the tower and go along with Mary. Um, right. And so you have that religious conflict sort of playing out right in front of you. And then, uh, you know, it gives, again, another way to see Jane Grey as she interacts with somebody who's Catholic, and yet they get along quite well also sort of teases out her relationship with Guilford Dudley. And I've seen that portrayed. There have been movies where Jane and Guilford, they're young and in love and just caught up in all these terrible things, but they're so in love. And he goes to the tower and he carves her name in the wall. And, and I did see the name Jane. It's carved a couple of times at the tower. They don't know it was during Jane Gray's, you know, time, right. but um, it does say Jane. Um, and then I've also seen Guilford portrayed as cold and calculating, which is very much what his father was. But this mm -hmm. just shows these two young people just trying to figure out what to do. And they were sort of forced into a marriage um, that they didn't necessarily seek. But what are we going to do? Are we together in this? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. time goes on, they're expecting to be released because other participants in this attempt to put Jane Grey on the throne have been released. And so they're wondering what to do. So it's just looking at different characters in unusual ways. And I did mm. think that was really interesting. I really like that. I like the invented character of Elizabeth Tilney who has her own backstory and her own problems and yeah. how she comes to appreciate Jane Grey and how Jane comes to appreciate other people a little bit as well. So I really like that. Yeah, very cool. Um, so how <clears throat> did the author help you see this time differently or what were some of the things the author did to combine what happened in the past with the story? Well, one of the things I thought was really clever was using this time period <clears throat> and I had never really looked at it and realized that it was nearly six months between the time Mary took the throne. Mm. And for a lot of that time, it did look like Jane might be released. Mary certainly, <coughs> excuse me, didn't blame Jane for the attempted coup. You know, Mary thought they were after yeah. her throne. 
But Mary didn't blame Jane and wanted to be sympathetic and wanted to be merciful. But six months was a long time to sort of be wondering what would happen. So that period of time hadn't really been examined before. So I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. And then another thing that I thought was really interesting and actually um, Susanna done in an interview she gave, talked about it. She decided to have the character speak in modern language, like we would speak. Mm -hmm. And in some um, novels you might read, the characters speak in a very formal, all the time, sort of a formal language. Like that's the tutor. Oh, wast thou in the tower this day? <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing, you know, this sort of, yeah. and she, her per perspective, Susanna Dunn's perspective is we don't know how people spoke at the time, but mm. this novel takes place in private quarters. Like it's Jane. I mean, she's in the tower, mm. but she's not in public. And so yeah. she has her characters just speak like we would. She felt like yeah. seeing their emotions and just getting their reactions to something and when there's something funny, there's one of the characters who is just always sort of inappropriately saying the wrong thing and everybody gets a chuckle yeah. and it's just, it just sounds like us. And she made that decision. Um, she, she called it, and I'm just going to read this. It's important to me to be able to give a sense of flow and naturalness. I want my characters and the situations they're in to feel real. And so mm. she made a conscious decision to have it set in the past with characters we know in the Tower of London with, you know, a time frame we know about, but speaking like they would today to kind of combine those worlds. And I thought that was really interesting. That was an interesting choice. Yeah, so, no, that is an interesting choice. Probably yeah. makes it a little, it, like you say, it makes it easier for us to connect with it, so... Yeah. And feel the frustration that they're feeling because they're just yeah. expressing feelings in language that doesn't sound formal. And she didn't want it right. to sound formal and therefore old fashioned. So I just thought that was right. an interesting choice. It, it seemed to work to me. Yeah. It worked. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so my, for mine, <laughs> um, I feel like the language was more formal. I think she did, okay. didn't do that, but it still worked. <laughs> it still was fine. Um, but I th one of the things I thought was interesting that, um, because as you mentioned, I think we both are very familiar with that Elizabethan time period. So it didn't necessarily make me see the time period in a different way. Um, or like my perception of the time period has not changed, but, um, but just was interesting to see more of how like everyday pieces of mm. things came together like you wouldn't often think about how do we get from point a to point b but because in the novel they have to get from point a <laughs> to point b she obviously researched how people traveled back then and figured out you know okay. oh, you hire a horse here and then you have to do <laughs> and so kind of seeing some of those like little behind the scenes pieces right. of life, right? Mm -hmm. was really interesting to me to sort of see it all put together. Um, it's not just the the big important events that were fascinating. It was kind of all the little like, like how we get from point A to point B, how we rent out a house, how we, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know, find a servant or a whatever mm -hmm. a person to watch my kid while I go to court or you know things like that right it just was kind of interesting to see see life from a different different angle I guess so I thought well, that was really interesting I think that's something that novels can do because they can show us what isn't recorded, what we really, right. you know, there, there are, okay. You understand in the records, you have to go and rent a horse or whatever. Yeah. But that, what that experience is like maybe isn't right. recorded. So that's great. Yeah. Which is something I, I think is really fun about not just this book, but all historical books is it kind of breathes life into mm -hmm. these things that you you know, in a nonfiction book, you read, like you're saying, you read that, oh, the records show that he hired a horse or he bought these clothes or whatever. Um, right. 
the case is, but yeah, seeing that it really brings it all to life. And, and that's one of the things I thought was so fun is like Elizabeth the first is in this book. You see her, she talks to the characters. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She's Mm -hmm. like walking around talking to people. And so it, it brings her to life. It brings that time period to life and puts more of a picture of these people in your mind and what they would go through or what they had to do just to live. And so, yeah, it's kind of fun. (laughs) <laughs> right. I think, I think that is true. We get a little behind the scenes kind of glimpse. And in this one too, when it talked about just even what was involved in being in this jail and dealing with the constable and knowing right. where everybody was and when the food is delivered and sleeping arrangements you know, you shared yeah. a bed with somebody and these were two women who'd never met before. And now, you know, they're in quite interesting quarters. And I, yeah. I did think that was, that was really interesting Yeah, Very interesting. Um, to get that, that look. And, you know, if you've been to the tower of London, you can sort of imagine um, the environment. And I just, again, I, I thought it was really interesting when they had you know, she was trying to send messages to Guildford and they were sending messages back and forth and Elizabeth yeah. Tilney was delivering them. So she's like the middle person hearing both sides, yeah. but she hears the emotion and how frustrated they are with each other sometimes. And so she's yeah. trying to, you know, deliver that. So I love that behind the scenes kind of thing. They just become yeah. more real people, right? right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, I know we chose these books because we were recommending them. So I'm not going to ask if you would recommend, because I think that's right. why we chose these. Um, we're looking at, you know, different kinds of books during this month, which has been so fun. So let me ask you instead of, would you recommend, why would you recommend this? What do you think um, a reader can gain? I know you've already talked a little bit about that. Are there other books by this author maybe that we could also look for or, you know, um, so why would you recommend, why is this a book that you found particularly fun and enjoyable and might be that for somebody else? Yeah. Um, so I would recommend this book, I think for a couple of the reasons we already talked about, just that it brings this time period to life. I just like the time period itself. Mm-hmm. It's fun to see people like Elizabeth and Cecil and, you know, <laughs> Mm-hmm. even Dudley and Amy Dudley being brought to life. Um, but um, other than that, I think it just is really clever. It's really well done. Um, you know, a lot of the times when you read a mystery or, you know, there's something big that's going to be revealed or figured out in a book. Um, if it's too easy (laughs) to figure out, it's maybe not always quite as much fun. And I feel like it just was a really well thought out, um, story and, um, the, the, you know, the mystery was really fun to, to figure out and it wasn't too easy. Like there were things that I didn't see coming kind of thing and, you know, or didn't know how it was going to come about. And, um, and so I thought that was was really fun. And um, to see that in the time period was cool mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. I think that would be fun. And this is like, I think a whole big series. So there are okay. a lot more books in the, in the series. So if you like the first one, <laughs> you can go on and continue reading about Ursula and life at Elizabeth's court. So. Okay. So this is the first one in an ongoing. Okay. Great. Yeah, And I think they kind of set it up so that, um, like this one, she's unofficially gathering information. It's just, she just happens to kind of be, you know, in the right time at the right or in the right place at the right time. Um, and I think they're kind of, they kind of set it up so that in the next ones, maybe she's in a little bit more of an official, Oh. buying <laughs> <laughs> capacity so it might be a little more official in the next ones but I haven't read the next one yet so I can't really confirm that but it seems like that's where it's going so okay okay that's great that's great 
<laughs> so, I mean, that is really intriguing. So I'm going to, I'm going to look at that one. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I like this. I like this one very much. Um, I think that Jane Gray herself tends to be overlooked and either sort of pushed into that victim kind of category. And it's such a mm. short period of time. It seems like I read quite a bit about the debate of whether did Edward have the right to change the succession. So a lot of legal sort of looking at it. And then how did Mary manage? And that is a fascinating story from Mary's perspective as well. You know, she's able to raise an army. Nobody thought Mary would win. You know, most yeah. people thought Jane was going to be the queen, including all of the foreign ambassadors are making, you know, overtures toward Jane. And so Jane had gone. What we, what we, I think don't really look at is Jane is plucked into this position. She's shoved into this position. Um, she did not know about it. She didn't seek it. That seems pretty much agreed upon. And yet she did take it seriously. And then we can all agree less than two weeks later, whether it was nine or 13 yeah. days, she suddenly not only, okay, can I go home now? And that's what comes through here. And what I understood she said when they, you know, ripped the the royal banner, you know, you can't sit under this anymore. And they take the yeah. crown, clothes of state off her and tell her she has to leave the royal apartments. She wants to go home. She, it's not like she sought to be the queen. And if it's over, yeah. it's over, but she can't go home. Right. She's sent to the tower. She is kept in captivity. And she really fades, I think, from the official record at that time. And we mm -hmm. kind of know she's in the tower, but we don't really focus on her. And so that's one of the things I really liked about this book is that the focus stays on her. We hear about what Jane's doing and we know that Jane has come into London with Elizabeth and she can hear from her apartments, all the music and all the fanfare as Jane comes into the tower and releases um, Catholic prisoners. And so she's aware of that going on, but the focus stays on Jane. It's sort of like spotlight stays on her. Yeah. And that's new to me. And that I thought was really interesting. And so you have her and Elizabeth Tilney, her servant, sort of both strong women, both having these differing religious views. And so the focus is on these women, which is really interesting to me. Um, there's another yeah. woman called Goose, who's one of the other servants <laughs> who's, you know, making, she's the one making jokes and, and, uh, and then if you know the story, if you know what's going to happen and you know that eventually come February for a variety of reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with Jane Grey, she does nothing wrong, yeah. but she is executed. And so, you know, if you know that's coming, but you hear her and Elizabeth's only talking about how soon do you think you'll be released? So-and-so has been released. I think we're going to get released. I'm planning to go, you know, Elizabeth Tilney is talking about getting to go back home and Jane's going to go back home. And you really see how she's so hopeful. And then when she learns because of the Wyatt rebellion, which was not to put Jane Gray on the throne. So, you know, again, yeah. it was not about her. But the betrayal of her father, who participates in the Wyatt mm. Rebellion, and after that, Mary, you know, in some ways didn't have a choice, and and Philip's going to come over, and this big royal marriage is going to happen, and so Jane is sort of a casualty of war in that way, um, collateral damage almost. But you've gotten to know her in her tower experience, and you've gotten yeah. to see her hope for being released. And how that's taken away. And so I really did think that was very interesting. And I've never thought about that. I mean, my yeah. focus has not stayed with Jane. So it was, it was something right. really interesting to me. Um, so I thought that was great. And yeah. um, Susanna Dunn has written some other books set at the time. They're not um, a series like you were describing, but she has some others. So I'll just share a few titles. Mm -hmm. The Queen of Subtleties which is a great title. It's about Anne Boleyn, but subtlety. So of course it's being subtle, Anne Boleyn, but also <laughs> um, the another character in that book is actually someone who bakes subtleties, which is the desserts, those very elaborate, beautiful, carved almost desserts mm. are called subtleties. Yeah. So 
So she's the queen of subtlety and subtleties. Anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. Then the sixth wife, which is not surprisingly about Catherine Parr, um, mm. the queen's sorrow, which is about Mary the first. So it'd be interesting to look at that. The yeah. confessions of Catherine Howard and um, the May bride. Interestingly, I was thinking May bride, who would that be? May bride. Well, of course that's Jane Seymour who becomes mm. the May bride because Henry's yeah. just executed Anne Boleyn. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I have not read others, but I am excited to do so because again, if you look at the descriptions, she's inventing the other characters to go around this historic character. And I thought that was just a really interesting way to bring us into a historic world and show us maybe another side or a fuller side, a more complicated side of some of these historic characters. Yeah. So, are. yeah. <laughs> so let's just both once again, hold up our books and remind everybody. So mine is the lady, oops, wrong way. The lady of misrule by Susanna Dunn. Of course, I'll have this in the show notes and Lindsay tell us yours again. Mine is to shield the queen by Fiona Buckley. All right. Now, if you're out there listening, what we would love is to end up after this month of fun fiction with a list of fiction we can recommend to each other. So if you're listening, we would love to hear from you. So please reach out um, at Shake Up History on social media or Carol Ann at carolannloyd.com if you want to email me. Um, you can also make comments on the podcast. But please let us know what are you, some of your favorite historic fiction? What, what do you enjoy reading on the fiction side? So we can, you know, maybe build a list that we can all share so we can get to know some of these and we can look all of the, all of these boxes are ticked. They're royals, <laughs> they're rebels, and they are quite romantic <laughs> or not, you know, but there's a lot of romance and potential romance going on. And I think that would be really fun. We look a lot at the history and of course we love that, but the fiction is also really fun. So we would love to hear from you some of your favorite fictional accounts of history. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lindsay, for coming on and sharing this and all you do. Thank you everyone for listening and being part of this fun summer journey as we all continue to shake up history together. Thank you.